Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. I'm here today to talk about Titans and why I am just at the point where I am almost done with this series. I don't understand what they are doing. It's like their tone is all over the place in this season. They're still trying to be who they want to be from season one, the dark grittiness, but then they're also trying to be what fans want them to be, which is more light and humorous. And it's just clashing with each other the way it is not working. This show is so emotionless. Like I cannot believe it, which is surprisingly shocking because Greg Burton uh, Nelly, he is the executive producer of these um, HBO Max DC Universe uh, shows. And we all know he's from the Arrowverse and he's all about emotion. But yet this show is so emotionless. It's like this show wants to be so dark and gritty that it's afraid to let in some emotion. And this fourth episode is a clear indication of that. This episode should have been like a grieving moment from when Hawk died in the third episode. And normally I don't like episodes that are slowed down that has like a lot of emotion, like way too much emotion. It brings the story down of the story art, but I was okay with them doing it in this episode because it was much needed. Yet we don't get much of that. All we get is a few moments, touching moments from Connor, which I really liked. I really liked how Superboy felt like so like upset that he let Hawk die, which wasn't his fault. It's just he wasn't fast enough. And we really got to see that emotion through his performance. And I loved it. I wanted to see it throughout the entire episode. But no, it was only for that minute in that minute only because this show doesn't want to show emotion then there's dove you think she would be grieving more than anybody and what this she does she's not even crying in this episode she cried last um episode but she's not even crying or nothing in this episode instead she's just sad and she decides well i'm gonna move to paris and it's like, that's how you're going to grieve with this dude's death. You're just going to leave and we're not going to see it. It's going to happen off screen. And it's like, this is what this show does. It does that crap. When it doesn't want to address emotion of grieving and sorrow, they write characters off and then send them to like another country and stuff. They did it with Bruce early on in like the first, no, second episode in crap. Or maybe it was the first episode. I can't remember which one it was. Um, because, you know, he thought Jason had died. He was so heartbroken over that and distraught that he murdered the Joker. And instead of seeing all this progress throughout the show, he's just like, screw it, I'm leaving, you be Batman now. And it's like, because these people, they don't want to show emotion on the show. So they just completely write it off because it's their quick fix and everything. And that is terrible story writing. Like, I wish people would stop saying, oh, the show was better now. It's so much better now. No, it is not. For all the complaints that people have made about other shows similar to this, why aren't you complaining about this? They are doing the same exact crap the other shows are doing, and people are giving it a pass because the first two seasons were crap. And then there's Gar. The dude wasn't even like upset about like Hawk dying. That was like a big brother to him. And this is a dude who idolizes superheroes and idolizes the Titans. So you think he would be more upset, but instead he's just making a giant pizza and dodging like fire bolts and everything. Wait, 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 wait. There's something that's been bugging me since season one. Hold up a second. <sighs> now that's better. It might not be laser bolts, but hey, the lease is green. And Dick, he's not grieving at all. He He's still his stone cold, heartless self. And it's like, he's not even grieving over his friend. Instead, he's still trying to catch the man who pretty much murdered him, which I, I get that. But you know, when it comes to Nightwing, sometimes it depends on which version you get in the comic book. Sometimes you'll get the one that is stone cold and a little hateful, and other times you get one that's a little bit more like 
emotional, more plucky and stuff. And it's just, it depends. Sometimes, because Nightwing really is just Batman Jr., you know? But he has a little bit more humanity sometimes than Batman. But it's like, yeah, even he's not even grieving over this. And Starfire, she doesn't even care. <laughs> Well, to be to, to be to give her some like credit when she did first show up, she was still going on her crazy brainwash stuff. But you know, after that, she still didn't care and stuff. And it's like I don't get it. This should have been a big emotional episode where all of the Titans are out looking for Jason, and they're not. The only one who is literally doing that is Dick, and the only reason why he's doing that is because. Those two are like brothers in a way, raised by Batman, and he has to, he knows he has to stop this dude because of how crazy and skilled he is. And it's just this show is a freaking mess. And you think people will be more emotional with this giant blue filter tent on the camera, but no, this still emotionless. This show has no emotion. This is a problem this show has had since season one. People have always been upset about that. This show has none. That is why when Doom Patrol came around, it had nothing but emotion. And people loved it, like myself. Because it has great emotion. The only thing that's bugging people about Doom Patrol is that we assume they will turn into superheroes at some point, And so far, they haven't. But it still has more emotion than this show. And I have a lot of problems with this episode episode four like my god the tone was all over the place you had like i said before you had your dark green moments from season one but then you have what fans want which is this light humorous stuff and they're not working together they're literally clashing like oil and water and stuff and it's just like the humor in this feels so forced that even sometimes the actors aren't giving a good performance because they're trying to ham it up like a Disney Channel show. And that is literally what it is because this show is so dark and gritty that they literally is just acting like lampoons of themselves and stuff by now. Like, I, I just don't get it. And what's also bugging me is I'm sick and tired of them always walking around in their civilian clothes and going out in the field in their civilian clothes. You are superheroes. You are supposed to wear your stinking superhero costume. Do that. Like when Nightwing showed up at the end fighting Jason, I'm like, thank God he's in his freaking costume. Because I can't take no more of this civilian clothes crap. Also, it's pretty apparent now that the main focus of this se um, season is the Red Hood story arc. Raven has still not shown up. And it's like... I assume, like many people else, that this season was going to be about Starfire and Blackfire because season one of Titans was about Raven, season two was about Nightwing, and with the introduction of Star um, Blackfire at the end of season two, we assume third season was going to be about that. And she finally shows up and it's an extremely odd and disappointing episode. Also, I want to point out, having Blackfire be held captive by a white dude that just don't look right because this black fire is a black woman she's not the orange alien skin person that you see in the comic books and stuff and you know just visually it just doesn't look right it just looks messed up on so many levels so like okay the emotion when it comes to starfire now, I like this actress, but I'm not liking her performance at all in season three because, first of all, they gave her these grayish green contact lenses and she, she just looks awkward with them. Also, her curly hair is a little bit distracting, too. I know it's like the comic book and I appreciate that, but it needs to be more lighter. It's like a dark purplish kind of color. And, you know, it's kind of blending in with all, like, it, it, it's just distracting. And so I need her hair to be lighter because, you know, the actress is a very dark skinned woman and she also wears dark purple. So all this darkness is going around and I need some lightness to like, you know, brighten things up. 
And so, like, I wish they would change her hair color back to the color it was in season two. Now, as for her eyes, they're just too distracting. I can't be the only person who is distracted by her eyes. It's just like they have these fake contact lenses in her, and it makes her look awkward. And whenever she is giving her performance, I can't pay attention to it, no matter how good it is, because of her eyes. And they're just too distracting. Now, as for the black fire stuff, that was just a disappointing scene all around. I assume when Blackfire came to Earth, she was going to wreak some havoc on Earth. Because, you know, she is now, the, I guess, they, cause it, it, we assume she was like the queen now over in her planet. And because, you know, whenever you see Blackfire, she's a bad woman. I remember in two episodes of Teen Titans I've seen her in, they were two great, phenomenal episodes. And you really saw how bad she is. And not only that, but you, the, just the voice actresses, which was the same actress as Starfire, make them seem so alien. On Teen Titans, they made both Starfire and Blackfire seem alien. They made them look alien, act alien, sound alien. On this show, all I'm seeing is two human black women. And that's it. And that's literally all I see. And yes, I'm black myself, so I don't want to hear no crap. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that's literally all I'm getting from both their performances. It's like they just act human. They act too human and stuff. Nothing. This Starfire doesn't act nothing like she does in any of her in a, um, other incarnations. She doesn't have that quirkiness to her or nothing like that. And as for Blackfire, the it's changed from both actresses when they was having their like heated sister debate. I was not feeling that. These two have no chemistry whatsoever. Like none. And it's like, it's literally like two people meeting for the first time, complete strangers, and just running off the mouth towards each other for, just for the fun of it. And that's what, that's what I felt from that. But I did not feel that these two are sisters. And I don't even feel like they really hate each other that much. It's just like, they just there and just like, whatever, you know? And what I also don't understand is like, how did she get captured so stinking fast? How did the, this organization find her? And not only did they find her, how were they able to contain her long enough, you know, to like delude her powers and stuff? I don't get that. I don't get this about, about this show. They did the same thing to Starfire in the first season. She came to Earth, somehow she got captured and you know her powers were like drained and kind of she was brainwashed and lost her memory and stuff like that it's like how are they able to, to capture these aliens so quickly and stuff but yet they can't capture somebody like jason todd <laughs> i really don't understand any of that and like an idiot okay well first her and gar were just gonna leave her sister down in that prison to die and that's literally what the dude said. She's going to be there for hundreds and hundreds of years and it's going to die. The, and all her power is going to be drained and stuff like that. And they were going to leave her like that. I'm just like, that's not the heroic thing to do. But then the sister he loved on her decided to break her free. And so, and then she's going to take her back to the, um, the, the back cave. And it's just like, when she got rescued, it's just like, Nothing. It was just like bitter sisterness. I assumed with the music and them pacing around each other, I assumed that the scientist dude was working for Blackfire. It really seemed like he was going to betray Gar and Starfire and get the jump on them to help out Blackfire. None of that happened. It would have made it more interesting, but no, she was literally just a prisoner there. And th that's just it. Like she was literally just a prisoner. And it's like the fight scene between them two, it wasn't even all that interesting. And it's just like, what was the point in adding Blackfire to this show if they're just going to make her like this? There was literally no point. There was no point in teasing that at the end of season two. At the end of season two, she seemed a heck of a lot more scary. 
what did this what did the showrunners do? Did they like fire the old team and hire some new people or something? I don't get it. As for Gar, he was pretty funny in this. Um But he's literally just there. <laughs> Again, he's literally just there. He's literally just there to tag with who's ever he's with. Like we see him not even grieving over a hawk and he's making a giant pizza. Then he almost get fried and then he's like, screw you, you stay away from me. But then he helps her out. Now the scene with the car, him being in the trunk, that was funny. I like that. <laughs> but he's literally just there. He's not even a character on the show, really. And it's just, it, it's pointless having his character on the show. It's not going to do anything with him. It's not even going to turn him to a real beast boy. Now, the other part of this episode deals with Dick breaking out Jonathan Crane, the scarecrow, out of Arkham because Jason hired a hit on him. Now, this is what's so strange. I still don't like this scarecrow. He doesn't seem like the scarecrow. It's just this dude, just his appearance, like that John, they shaved that beard off, man. <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's the scarecrow also a side note the actor like i said before he got in trouble on set the way he got me to and timed up we don't know what he did because they will not elaborate on the show but whatever it was he got in trouble twice to the point where they had to have him followed around set to make sure he wouldn't do anything to nobody else what did this dude do like i want to know i'm just curious <laughs> If it was that bad, why is he still on the show and stuff? Now back to the character. I do not like the idea of once again people knowing everybody's identity. Jonathan Crane knows everything about the Titans. He knows all of their secret identity. He knows who Bruce Wayne is. He knows that he is Batman. He knows who Barbara is and the whole Batgirl thing. Why? Because Jason told him. And this is Greg Berlanti's crap of not wanting superheroes to have super identities. He does this all the time on the Arrowverse. It's like, this man does not deserve to work on comic book stuff. And so, basically it's just an exchange between him and Dick. Uh, him trying to get under Dick's skin. He, this is the part where I don't understand. Okay, so Dick took him out to the woods in the cabin. A place where Bruce used to train both him and Jason. And... What's interesting is Dick, when he's trying to get into this place, Jonathan takes a run for it and tries to run off. And then Dick doesn't even go after him because he knows he's going to get captured. How? He gets trapped in the net. Now, what are the odds that Jonathan is going to run in the direction that this net is just lying on the ground? Seriously. Like, what are the odds? And then later on at night, when we see him trying to escape, we see him get electrocuted by an electrical fence. There is a perimeter around the electrical fence. Or, actually, you know what? I don't even want to know if it's Dick's perimeter, um, Bruce Wayne's perimeter. It could have been just Jason throwing up like an electrical like fence wall, but then how did Jason know he was going to run in that direction? I hate plot armor. Seriously. What are the odds of that happening? Also... Back to the dark and gritty tone. We now see how screwed up Bruce Wayne, this Batman is, and why Dick hates him so much. It is getting more and more revealed. So, to train both Jason and Dick, he takes them out to the woods in his cavern, and he lets them get chased by wolves so they can outrun it. I'm just like... Dude, what kind of training is that? Like, who is this Bruce Wayne? And then Dick reveals what he did with the wolf. He chopped the thing's head off. We see a giant bloody knife and we see the wolf's head on the table. And Bruce is okay with this. This show is so screwed up. This is not Titans. This is not Batman. This is not Dick. This, what is this crap? Like, literally, what is this crap? And this is what it is. It is crap. This is a crap show. This is a show who had an identity that alienated the fan base. 
and now it's trying to be something different but also bring in something it used to be and it is literally just not working i am sick of this garbage show it is not better it is not good it's not even a heroic show young kids are supposed to look up the heroes how are they supposed to look up to this group of heroes you have dick who chopped the head off of a wolf you have starfire and beast boy literally about to leave somebody prisoner to die that's family and stuff you have a group of heroes who are not even mourning the loss of their teammate and or barely mourning it it's like this is not something that people are supposed to look up to this is literal garbage this is literal crap this is scum. The people who are writing this show have no idea what they are doing. The people who are producing this show have no idea what they are doing. The people who are the showrunners have literally no idea what they are doing. The only thing I liked about this episode was the fight between uh, Nightwing and Red Hood. And now I'm gonna get into something else. Now the fight between Nightwing and Red Hood, oh yeah much appreciated i enjoyed that in a stream lot that was really like the only really cool thing in the entire episode like they were suited up they was fighting there was some nice gun food going on like it was much 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 appreciated barbara this is what's so strange i get the idea that she's a cop and she has to stop the red hood and that this other dude is on her case about it but when she's told the one lady get her a helicopter because she knows where Dick is going and what kind of facility this is, I assume it was going to be her in the helicopter to stop the Red Hood and stuff and by herself. Because why would you send one of your cops over there to Bruce this little hideout? So the cop can go snooping around. So you know cops are going to investigate the area because there was a shooting that took place. And also there was people over there that wanted to escape um, dudes and stuff. Not to mention, they know Dick Grayson broke Jonathan Crane out of prison. So they're looking for him. And who are they going to find? They're going to find Jonathan Crane, Nightwing, and the Red Hood. Now, what the cops would have sworn that place and, you know, their identities are now blown. Not only that, but she gives the, the, the kill order strike because the dude in the helicopter is only one cop in the helicopter. He's there to take in um, Crane and the Red Hood dude. And it's like she see well, he sees that Red Hood is fighting Nightwing and he doesn't have a clear shot because it's a little fuzzy she tells him to take the shot he shoots dick instead now of course he's wearing that body armor so he's not hurt but it's like after that you would assume the logical thing would be a bunch of cops and the csi type people going in and searching that entire place and when they search that entire place they're gonna find out that there's a whole bunch of like batman type of equipment over there and stuff you know it's like why would she do that it would literally expose everything they worked for. It would have made more sense if she would have went by herself. I don't understand this show. I don't understand this show. I literally don't understand this show. How is it both Teen Titans and Young Justice, the cartoon series, is a million times better than this live action show? I hate the Arrowverse, but heck. Even the Arrowverse is a bit better than this. And that's sad to say because it's the Arrowverse and it's on the CW. And I'm really starting to think that this, I don't really want to see this show get canceled because then of course people are going to lose jobs and, you know, and I want this show to improve. But if it's not improving now and this is the third season, I'm like, this show just needs to end. It really needs to. Because I don't get what so many people on YouTube are talking about. Oh, it's so great. Oh, it's better. Oh, it's been fixed. 
No, it has not. Stop lying to yourself. You're only saying that so that shows like this won't get bad reviews and it won't get canceled. Because you'd rather have this than nothing at all. But the show is literally not getting any better. It still has the filter. For some reason, they no longer shoot at night. They only shoot during the day. Which I don't understand why that is. It's like none of these characters act the same way they used to act. And the tone is literally all over the place. That scientist, dude, I wanted to throw something through the computer, or not the computer screen, but the TV and everything. Because the dude was literally acting like he was on the Disney Channel. <laughs> it's like he was too, they, they literally told that dude to ham it up. Because this show is too dark. And they knew it was going to be a dark episode because of the wolf's head. God, this show sucks. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.